guest today is Deborah Rand Webb. Welcome, and thank, thank you for you. being here. Thank you, Michael. All right, so you are the executive director of the Key Clubhouse in South Florida. Yes, I am. Let's talk about what that does, and then what you do, and what the organization does, and and why you are doing this at this point in your life. The Key Clubhouse of South Florida helps people with mental illnesses find work, go back to school, find housing, and um, perhaps meet new people like-minded. Um, we help people um, get jobs in the community that haven't worked in a long time because of their illness, i.e. schizophrenia, clinical depression, post-traumatic stress syndrome, and other very serious mental illnesses. Years ago, you decided to spend your life, a lot of your life, in this type of arena. What drove you to that point? Um, I always wanted to help people. Um, even when I was back in college, I always had that desire for many years. Um, over 25 years, I was in PR and marketing, actually here in South Florida. But about 15 years ago, I was recruited to start up the Pace Center for Girls in Fort Myers, Florida. And after that, I was recruited to start a clubhouse in Fort Myers, Florida, for people with mental illnesses. So I have a lot of experience now in not-for-profit, helping people with mental illnesses. And when I moved back to Miami uh, seven years ago, there was a position open as the executive director of the Key Clubhouse. So I, I continued that work. So you, the organization is the key clubhouse in South Florida. There are the cl clubhouses across the country. There are 330 throughout the world. That, that, that's an amazing number. Yes. One of the things that, that we like to do is bring mental illness out of the shadows and bring it to, to the front so people can look at it and understand how significant that is and, and the challenge that it is, that, not just for the person, but for the family and for the community. Yes. Tell me about your motivation to stay. What's What drives you every day to be happy when you wake up to go do this? Well, what drives me is that I'm able to make a difference in someone's life and have a really strong purpose to help a group of people that have really been marginalized and misunderstood um, and really need help. They are the most vulnerable folks, aside from children that are in foster care or that have been abused, but they are very marginalized um, for their illness. And it's just a lack of education in the community or amongst people what mental illness is and that an, a misunderstanding that people can't have a regular, very quality life um, with a mental illness. You brought up about a purpose. And so often people don't know what their purpose is. Mm -hmm. And I was with a, a, a gentleman that has a PhD in biology. He worked for a major organization studying mosquitoes. So I said to him after listening to the life cycle of mosquitoes, hey, doc, what is the purpose of a mosquito? He said it's to eat and to procreate. Then he turned around and he said, and what's your purpose, Michael? Mm. So I think we're getting a feeling about what you, what your purpose is to be able to help these people that really need that. Who it, It's more than marginalized. I think it's almost stay away type of thing because of ignorance. And what do we do as a society right, right. about that? And it's certainly tough. Not too long ago, we had a young man who had a schizophrenic break about 15 years ago, he just got his master's and he wanted to come in and sing a song that he wrote. Mm -hmm. His mother was sitting right here. He starts, right, his son was sitting there and he started singing this song, You Are Not Alone. I'm crying, the mother's crying, we're holding hands. I'm imagining this young man walking down this Cane Boulevard with no shirt and no shoes. What is that like for you when you know that people that, are, that you're helping maybe a week before or a month before were homeless yeah. and schizophrenic and hallucinating. What yeah. is how, how do you process that and how, how do you get them from not wanting help to get to getting help? Well, a clubhouse is a very magical and special place. Um, it's people caring about people. So when you come into the clubhouse, and I totally invite you to, to come and visit, you'll experience the welcoming feeling of no matter what, your situation is you're welcomed and you can be part of the the group and the, the community there that basically help each other. So for me, when I see somebody coming in that is got their guard up, that they've been 
um, judged because of their situation and their illness and have not been accepted by society. And I see them come in and start letting that guard down because of the ambiance and the environment of the people that are accepting them and also giving them a purpose in life by being part of the clubhouse. That is, that is everything to me. Um, so it wakes me up in the morning. So you have a facility on 27th yeah. Avenue? Yes. 70th Street area? Um, 83rd. 83rd. And tell us about that facility. What happens there? What happens there is we have, it's a regular work environment. Um, you'll see members. We call them members, not clients, not patients, um, not consumers. We call them members of the clubhouse. They were answering the phones. They'll be work There's a business unit. We They do letters. They do correspondence. They enter in all the data we need to keep the operations going. We have an employment office that helps all the members get jobs in the community. We have a commercial kitchen with a dining area and a snack bar that the members actually run themselves, do the cooking, the janitorial, the cost effectiveness of the program. We have a communications unit that runs the WKEY broadcast show and does newsletters and brochures and videos. And basically we're we, we are the same as a an, empl an, an office, a work office. Um, and so we're helping people practice going back to work by being at the clubhouse and doing the and work. So people can find out more information. I think the website is on, on the, on the yes. screen there. What is the website again? Um, Keyclubhouse.org. Okay. And I think we have some pictures. Yes. Yeah, I, and um, Alex, why don't you put some of the pictures up? Why don't you tell us about these? This is our communications unit. Of course, this is during COVID um, when we had we were virtual at the time. These folks are working on the um, on the newsletter um, and the website. They put the website together. They put our newsletters together and the brochures together. So there are folks working right in the clubhouse. And 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 uh, do we have some other pictures there, Alex? That's the video production. We just um, we just moved in this particular facility, we partnered with Carrefour Supportive Housing. So there's 40 apartments on top of the building of the clubhouse that our members live in. And this is the video production center that basically we're doing a video for our big luncheon that's coming up. So we, we're doing all this really community. Commun is that connected to the to the event that we're going to be talking yes. about? Yes. Okay. All right. So we, we have, uh, in a few minutes, David Grenier is going to come aboard. Beautiful. Uh, with, um, he's in Canada. And he's a counselor and stand-up comic, an author, and an active participant for uh, stand-up for mental health. Right. So let's continue on with some other pictures. Tell us about this. This is our dining room. We have, like I said, we have a commercial kitchen and a dining room where breakfast, lunch are served that the members do um, cook. And right here, you're just seeing our production team, our video production team, doing a um, video for the clubhouse. Uh, do we have another one? Here's two of our members saying hi. They're sending out birthday cards, get well cards. We miss you cards to our members. We do that um, for all of our members. Okay. And do we have one other one? Oh, there we go. There we are. One of our members, uh, one of our staff actually is, is um, helping make the lunch for the, the day. So we know during the last three years with the pandemic, it's put a lot of stress on people. And now that... It, it appears to be over for a lot of people, but for other people, it's not over. They're still living in the middle of that with the huge losses they've had, the change of their environment, family members dying or sick, and people yeah. afraid to being close. So when when you see the effect that it has on people, especially people that have been marginalized and pushed away, what goes on inside you? I mean, it's it's sad. It's It's basically a sad feeling that, you know, I think a lot of people right now are feeling a lot of the post-traumatic stress from the pandemic. And even as we come out of it a little bit, I think there's st still some fear of getting it and, and you know, isolation. Sometimes people feel as think that people that have mental illness, it's something that they are doing to themselves. No. Right. And we, and we understand that so pe people are frightened of that. They're not quite sure what to do. Maybe they're internalizing a whole bunch of it. But people can find out more about what you do and, and about the mental health crisis that's happening across the globe, in particular you know, in, in the United States. Mm -hmm. And it certainly is an issue. We do a lot of shows on trying to help people feel 
feel better about where they are and about how to help you know family members but if somebody's feeling not feeling really good right now and they're having some in what they would consider an emotional crisis what do you want them to do well you can certainly call the key clubhouse of south florida um, at 305-693-3508. You can come and tour the clubhouse. We're not a medical model. We're basically a vocational recovery through work model, mm -hmm. but it's a great place for you to begin your healing journey. Let's put it that way. I think it's a healing place. I see so many members get just thrive and do so much better by just being part of the key clubhouse community. So there, there, there is hope and there is a pathway for somebody that's had a crisis, that getting medical treatment to moving on and then getting into a vocational place to where they can get ready to go back into society. Yeah. Yeah. And socially too. I mean, not only we're also a vocational recovery program for people, but on weekends, like we just went to the Carl Gables Art Festival as a group. Um, there's, we're open on the holidays for for holiday events. We do all kinds of socials, bowling and golf and you know, miniature golf. And um, there, the Perez Museum, we do things on the weekends. And so it's also a socialization for you to get back and find yourself. And so if somebody's having a crisis, they can dial 311, they can dial 911. There's a new number. What is it? 988. 988. That's the number they can call. Yes. For people that are trained, all right? Yes. To help. So they can dial 988. They get immediate attention. Right. And um, and there is help out there for, for everybody. Yes. And I think that it's important for people to know that, not to do anything stupid, but to ask for help when you need oh, it. Absolutely. We, ha we have an event coming up, and we're going to bring in David Grenier. Uh, Alex, can you bring in David? And we're going to move our, uh, we're going to move around here. Like Hello. This. Here he is. Hey, how are you? Hey. Nice to see uh, you, folks. Thanks for coming in, and we're going to be up on the screen in just a second. Okay. Uh, live live TV, David. Here we go. All so, right. David, so you're a counselor, you're a stand-up comic, you're an author, you're a, a participant in helping people get to the other side of uh, mental illness and in dealing with where they are. So tell us about a little bit more about your your uh, your history, what you've been doing, and how you're going to help out down here in Miami. Cool. Um, so yes, I'm a counselor, I'm a stand-up comic, and I also have bipolar. So uh, I've walked the walk. Um, I'm on meds, I've been in therapy, I've been in psych wards, the whole, the whole nine yards. And since 2004, I've run Stand Up for Mental Health, where I teach folks like myself with mental illnesses how to do stand-up comedy as a way of building confidence and fighting public stigma. So, and, and I'm glad you brought about the public uh, stigma because it's when people st stand up like yourself and say, listen, here's what I've dealt with and here's what I'm dealing with and you can be successful. And so tell right. us about when, when you come down here to Miami, what you're going to be doing. Okay, great. So uh, Deborah has provided me four of her clubhouse members and I'm teaching them how to do stand up comedy and they're all going to develop routines basically about their lives, about their recovery journeys. And we will, because I'm going to be coming down to Miami, we will perform at this luncheon. So we'll basically put on a comedy show. Well, I, I will run an MC and do a bunch of comedy. And then I'll bring up the four members one by one. And um, they're going to blow you away. They're going to be so good. And that's the whole thing about the public stigma is people see these folks with labels like, you know, schizophrenia and bipolar. And they see people who are funny and likable and intelligent that basically smash all those stereotypes we have of people with mental illness. And so it's a great way of destigmatizing the whole topic. So we, we know when we can make fun of ourselves and where we are and, and our humanness, right? The people, get, the endorphins are going and then we're more receptive about what's going on around us. Can you talk a little bit about yourself again, when you realized that you had had an issue and what you did concerning that? Oh, okay. So uh, my depression began, so I have bipolar, but I have what's called bipolar two. So it mostly manifests as depression. So I don't get any of the fun stuff. Like I don't get to get high and max out my credit card or any fun stuff like that. <laughs> I just feel like I suck. Um, so that's, that's my kind of bipolar, unfortunately. Um, so it, it began when I was, I think I was 16 
And um, of course, I didn't know what it was. And so I attempted suicide and I ended up in a psych ward. And my actual condition was not diagnosed for another 20 years. So I went around for 20 years with untreated, unmedicated, undiagnosed bipolar. So during those 20 years, you know, when it finally got diagnosed and I finally went on meds, it was like, oh my God. So this is what normal people are like. You mean like normal people actually want to get out of bed? They look forward to doing stuff. This was a huge revelation. And so uh, since then, I, you know, I went into therapy and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, here I am today. That's wonderful. What, what caused you to want to share your experience and be public like this? Um, well, after I got on meds, and I just want to say, uh, I'm not saying meds are for everyone because there's, there's a lot of controversy. So I, I, they've helped me a lot, but I'm not saying you have to be on meds. Uh, basically, what happened was that I used to be growing up, I was the class clown. I was the guy who was always shooting his mouth off and getting into trouble and saying the wrong thing at the wrong time, which, by the way, is basically a prerequisite for becoming a stand-up comic. Um, but uh, when I went on meds, so I went through this 20-year period where I essentially vanished. And I went on meds, and all of a sudden, I started to feel better. And I thought, you know something? I think I would like to do stand-up comedy. So I started doing stand-up comedy, and it was around the same time I was working as a trainer at the crisis center, and I was also getting my counselor training. So the three things just kind of meshed together, and I got asked to teach a, a stand-up comedy course at one of the local colleges that has nothing to do with mental health, but I would see people have these life-changing experiences getting up on stage and talking about themselves, and I thought, wow, wouldn't it be awesome to give this to people who wanted the life-changing experience and who wanted to do stand-up comedy, and that's how Stand Up for Mental Health began. That's wonderful. Tell us about your, your piece called Cracking Up. Oh, okay, so uh, uh, the CBC, which is the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation, they filmed a documentary on our program called Cracking Up, which is an amazing documentary. They followed us around for a whole year. Um, you know, they followed the comics around outside of class. Uh, they came to our shows. And it's, it's, it's an amazing documentary. It's, it's different than a lot of documentaries because it's, it's hopeful, it's funny, it's inspiring. And so it's a wonderful way to tell our stories without... Um, what, talking about some really heavy stuff without really depressing people and making them sad. So we, we do know that we want to be, when we go to listen to people, we want to feel good about it. And we, and we do want, you know, to, to be able to laugh and to say, oh, I yeah. can relate to that. So Deborah, wanted to talk about some of the things that he's going to be doing when he comes out. So David, what is what is the plan? I know you've already talked to four of our members <laughs> in terms of <laughs> yeah. uh, using humor to help heal. Yeah. So what what is the plan on um, what we're going to be doing? Okay, good. I'm glad you asked. Um, so the plan is I am working for a six week period via Zoom with mm -hmm. uh, four of the members of the clubhouse. And I'm teaching them all the nuts and bolts of stand-up comedy, so all the techniques and the formulas. And I'm working with them both in class and one-on-one. -on -one. So I'm helping them to write their acts, to take their lives and talk about what's important to them through stand-up comedy. And then I will be flying down and we will be doing a show at the luncheon. So Great. let me, how do you deal with people's uh, anxiety stage fright, if you will, about now standing on the other side rather than yeah. sitting down. How do you, how do you, how do you talk with people and get them to express themselves and be able to deal with that? So what I tell them about, about stage fright and anxiety, first of all, it's going to happen. There's nothing you can do to make it go away. And I think that's the mistake people make is they, they get afraid and then they think they have to make that fear go away. And that just makes it worse. So basically what I tell them, you know something, you're going to be nervous. There's really nothing you can do about it. So you're going to have to breathe, put one step in front of the other. And I remind them, you have an act. We know your act is going to work.
work because we've tried it out in class. We've rehearsed it a whole bunch of times. The audience is totally on your side. So we have stacked the deck in your favor. And it's up to you to take that last little leap of faith and get up on stage and do your thing. I forget who wrote the book, but there's a book called Fill the Fear and Do It Anyway. And I right. think that's part of it. And your point is, is well made, which is you got to be nervous and you got to be a little bit afraid when you do it. All right. And you're going to deliver a great message. And when you're done, you're going to feel so good about yourself yeah. that you were able to be able to do that. And one of the things we've certainly learned in doing these type of things as we're doing now, number one, you got to be natural too. Nobody cares. Just do your thing. And so you pick yeah. your nose or whatever. It is. It's yeah. all good. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so again, what, what motivates you to stay involved in uh, standing up, you know, for um, mental illness and for mental health? What, what drives you every day to continue on? Well, my one, my wife wants me out of the house, so I got to go somewhere. And something. <laughs> I hear you loud and clear. <laughs> <laughs> um, people, what people. motivates me is what I'm really good at is making other people into stars. And I love that process of watching people who know nothing about stand up comedy go from knowing nothing to six weeks later being on stage and doing this awesome show. And, um, you know, and I, I tell them to just to tag on to what you said stand up comedy is the greatest high there is, making people laugh. It's free. It's legal. There are no bad side effects. And so so that's what motivates me. And people can find out more about you by going to standupformentalhealth.com. Got a lot of things Correct. that are on there. And you, yeah. you, you, you travel a lot of places, whether it's by Zoom yeah. or in person, to, to, to yeah. do this. So as I would ask Deborah earlier about purpose, what is your purpose? Um, gee, good question. Um, I guess my purpose is to, like I say, make people into stars, make people who have been marginalized and written off into stars. And I think once you've had that experience, it's a life changing experience. Because let's face it, once you've done stand up comedy, once you've made an audience of 300 people laugh, you can do anything. You can get a job, you can go back to school whatever it is that you want to do, you can do it. So it must be pretty thrilling when you've taken somebody who was a little reticent and they're a little shy about it and walk them through the process and create a pathway for them and work with them and be a yeah. mentor to them and see them walk up on that stage and do their stuff and be the audience. And they're looking at you and they're yeah. saying to themselves, David, am I doing okay? All right. And when you get and when and when they hear hear you laugh in the middle of it or, or applaud, it must be thrilling for you and for them as well. Yeah, and I think you know the feedback they get isn't so much from me; it's the feedback that they get from the audience. And um, you know what I notice is so they'll be going up on stage and they'll be walking up and they're really scared, and all of a sudden they get their first laugh, and you can almost see this this thing happening where they go from "Oh my God, I can't do this" to wow, this is cool. I can, you know, and then the, <laughs> they're each doing four minute sets and the four minutes just races by once they get their first laugh. And certainly there are coaches that do this in all different segments of society. And we, and we all ha need that training to be able to move from one from Absolutely. sitting in the audience to, sit, to standing on the other side. Absolutely. So it's good work for everybody. And it must be thrilling for the for the relatives of the uh, people that are, that get on the stage and were fearful that perhaps a year or two before yeah. they were walking out on the streets with no shoes and no shirts and not on medicine or maybe on medicine. So it must be a thrill for them to see their loved ones improving and, and in, a, in a dramatic way and frequently doing things that their 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 relatives would never do, which is get on yeah. stage, hold hold yourself out there, tell jokes that you pray somebody's going to laugh at. All right. Yeah. So. And it's wonderful what you're doing. So you get, when is the event? The event is March 5th, 2023 at the Airport Pulling Hotel on uh, 1130, 1130, March 5th. And uh, and that's going to be, uh, people can go to your site at, where, what's your website? Keyclubhouse.org. You can buy tickets. Um, you can buy a table if you want. We still have some seats available. So feel free to join us and David and a day of laughter, which is the best medicine there is. Amen. That's David, right. do, you have, 
Would you have anything else you'd like to add before we uh, come back to here to just to Miami? Um, I am just thrilled to be doing this. I've, I've been to Miami a few times. You guys have an awesome city. And um, I'm really looking forward to the show. I, I, I love this part of the process. And, of course, performing with the comics is my favorite part. So, uh, yeah, I can't wait to get down there. It's wonderful. <laughs> David Grenier, thank you very much for your time. Appreciate it. Have a great week. And, uh, thank you, David. Enjoy yourself. And thanks for doing what you do. Okay, you. take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. We're going to go back to here. Okay. Can you move the cameras back? Do we need to move the we going to sign him off. Okay, there we go. So here we are. Yeah. Your events in, in a little more than a month. Yes. Yes. And, and people can find out more by going to your website, which we're going to put on the scroll there in just a second. Yes. And if people want to donate, they can do that. They can donate. You can go online. It is, um, we're sponsored by the Dosal Family Foundation as well. And Senator Renee Garcia is um, a sponsor. Oh, very nice. Yes. Yeah, Thank so you, Senator. Yes, and uh, we've got, um, yes, seats still available. So please come out and join the fun. That's terrific. Tell us about your family. My family? Your family. I have a daughter who's 16 years old. Uh, I'm not 16. What am I saying? Who's 26 years old. <laughs> Did you, we heard that. Another 10 years. What's the difference? All right. I'm sorry. Uh, right. 26 years. You caught me off guard there. Uh, 26 years old. Um, she just um, graduated with her mental health counseling degree Very nice. from University of Central Florida. She lives in Orlando, and I'm super proud. Okay, you should be. I guess she's going to be in that arena at some point or another. Oh, she's definitely in the mental health yeah. arena. Yes. By the way, when I was in school, I spent three months working in Jackson Memorial Hospital Institute. And I said to my psychiatrist at that point, what's it, the only difference between me and them is I got keys. And he says, that's the difference. <laughs> and so often people that that are, are not feeling right are embarrassed and are shy about it. And, and as uh, David had said, when he went on meds for him, mm -hmm. it completely altered his life where he, yeah. all, he, all of a sudden he said, hey, this is great. I feel better. All right. And yeah. so th there is hope for a lot of people. There's help all the time. Yes. Right. And again, the, the number, uh, 988, they could call. Is 988, nine, if 988. you're feeling like you need to talk to somebody. And, yes, that's the new number. And there's lots of other help around town. Miami Dade County is a big place. Mm -hmm. If you get lost, you don't know what to do, dial 311 and talk to them. Just say, I need some help. Yes. And if somebody's in a real crisis, they can dial 911. All right? Yes. And and there'll be some help there immediately. Absolutely. And, and so people should feel open enough to be able to say, I'm not feeling well. Yes. Yes. And, and so... How many uh, members do you have right now in your facility on 27th? We have 146 active members. Wow. Oh, yes. We have a That's lot. That's a big deal. It's a very big deal. Um, and uh, we've served over 800 people since opening in 2010. There's right now 13 clubhouses throughout the state of Florida. Um, and four more opening up, we would love to open up a, another clubhouse. So people go here to the clubhouse, Miami. they're there for a certain period of time until they're... Once a member, always a member. Okay. So you can come back anytime, but a lot of people do, um, I would say, come and then feel a little bit better. We place them in a job, they start doing well, they're living independently, they're staying out of the hospital. Um, but anytime they want to come back, we're there waiting. That's wonderful. Yes. I, we see that you know your purpose. Thank you. Deborah, thanks. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Michael. And again, people can visit their, your website at, what is the website address again? Keyclubhouse.org. Folks, thank you for joining us. We're going to look right in there. Thanks for being here and enjoy your day. Take care of your family. Thank you.